pausing only to decide how much time they would need to escape before the blast. Suddenly, they were interrupted by their captive. He broke in and said, it's all right, you, you, you may blow the factory, that's all right, but may I have my glasses because it's hopeless to get no glasses in nowhere today. And uh, you would have thought that uh, you probably said, damn your glasses, uh, you have no time for looking for glasses. Eh? But instead you dropped what you were doing and you searched all around the room and you found, you found the, the, the holster for, uh, for his glasses and gave him and he said, thank you very much. And so we went on with, with taping the fuses. So far, they had beaten the odds. Now the commandos had only seconds to make their escape. And after a few minutes, one minute, maybe two minutes, they were there with us on the railway line. And we ran the same way back as we had come in. The road condition and the snow condition were excellent because on the railway, quite a lot of the snow had blown away on the outer side. And that was frozen solid ground and we didn't put a mark. So everything was actually on our side. With determination, skill, and daring, the saboteurs had dealt a crippling blow to their enemy without losing a man. But heavy water had become a German priority. And within six months, the factory was back in operation. The Allies had to assume the worst. Nazi scientists were closer than ever to building a bomb. Another attack on the factory was set in motion. This time, from the air. In a bold noonday raid, 176 American bombers hurled destruction at the plant. The raid damaged factory buildings and killed civilians in a nearby shelter. But the heavy water, secured in the basement, went untouched. With production halted, the Germans decided to move the operation to the safety of the fatherland and inadvertently gave the commandos one last chance to destroy it forever. We had got information from London that the Germans had planned to take uh, down the remaining heavy water. Team members secretly scouted the route. The heavy water would be loaded onto railway cars and taken by train to Lake Tinsha. Here, the cars would go aboard a passenger ferry for the two-hour trip across the lake. A well-placed charge could sink the ferry, and with it, all the heavy water. But sinking a public ferry meant paying a terrible price. Her conclusion was that the sinking of the ferry was about the only possible solution. It would have to be civilian sabotage, which was naturally a very serious thing to deal with. There was no doubt in our mind that there were going to be human lives taken. And furthermore, it could be anybody. And Rukan was a small town, and it was really almost like all the family. Fearing neighbors and friends might die, the Norwegians sent an urgent message to London. The British reply was immediate and uncompromising. It has been talked over, and the conclusion is the heavy water has to be destroyed. Good luck. And when you get such a message from London, you have to do it. Not to be drastic, but in, anybody in my family was scheduled to go on that ferry. I couldn't do anything about it.
the Germans never put any guards on the ferry. They were watching the barrels on the railway. But the ferry boat itself was not guarded at all. At 10 o'clock on a quiet Sunday morning, the ferryman cast off from the dock on schedule. Forty-five minutes later, at the appointed spot, a blast tore through the bottom of the boat. It was a very, very hard blow, and the ferry rapidly rose, and the cargo on the ferry, they, they were railway wagons, you see, so they rushed down and tilted the ferry still more. Within moments, the mortally damaged ferry had sunk beneath the surface, carrying with it innocent passengers and Nazi Germany's atomic ambitions. The heavy water being on board went down with the ship and is still on the bottom of the Tinsha Lake. Later, the Allies would learn that the Nazis were never close to an atomic breakthrough. The U.S. won the A-bomb race. Within months of the German defeat, America dropped the first atomic bomb. But in the Allies' hands, the bomb helped to win a war not perpetuate one. If Hitler had the bomb, he might have used it to devastate the world. The Norwegian resistance fighters did their part to stop him. Their mission was one of the greatest feats of sabotage in military history, something that had to be done at all costs and was. You have to fight for your freedom and for peace. It's not something that you have every day. You have to fight for it every day to keep it. It's, it's like a glass bowl. It's very easy to break. It's easy to lose. 